Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Miller. I'm the pastor of First Lutheran Church in Lexington, North Carolina. We welcome you to this space, this cyberspace. We believe all are welcome in this space as they would be welcome at our space on State Street. And we believe that this table is the Lord's table and is open to all. All are welcome at this meal and at this time. This is the Sunday of Pentecost. It's the last Sunday of the month and uh, um, Pentecost Sunday and then next Sunday will be Holy Trinity Sunday and then after that we'll begin the common time or lectionary time or the Sundays after Pentecost will begin then. So we welcome you to this time. Um, we also invite you to be with us at our 11 o'clock um, sort of get together time. It's at a going to be on Facebook Live. You can find us at First Lutheran there on Facebook. Um, and it's a time to think more about the sermon, to share joys and concerns in the life of the community, um, and a time that we hold each other and we pray for each other and we pray for the larger world. So we invite you to that time at 11. Now let us focus our hearts and minds with our prelude this morning. were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, 
because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, beyond the Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and my sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, on Pentecost Sunday, there's a lot of, of focus on the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, all of the readings, if you go back and read them, and if you have read them with your family during your table worship, there are three presentations of the Holy Spirit. Uh, one in the Psalm, the Acts, Holy Spirit that moves, and then we talk about Acts, uh, the Holy Spirit also in the Gospel of John. Um, the thing about that is when we speak of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moves in so many unique and different and mysterious ways that you just can't say this is the Holy Spirit. You just, they move differently in, in the Psalms. It's a, it's a spirit of creation. Um, and in, in the um, John, it's the presence of Christ through the Holy Spirit. This is a different spirit that is gathering and bringing together and breaking down walls. Um, and so I, I was sort of forced to choose which one would I preach on. And normally I preach on the gospel. I've done a lot of the gospel of John, so I picked this story from Acts. It's a classic story. It's, it's kind of the day that we remember the beginning of the church. Um, but we need to go back and remember that the book of Acts is the second part of a larger two-volume set. Um, it starts with the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke ends with Jesus' ascension. Um, he says to ascend into heaven. And there's a lot of confusion. And, but he makes it clear, stay in Jerusalem and then remember to forgive to preach and to teach. The way the book of Acts begins is again with the ascension, but it's this kind of funny story of Jesus ascending into heaven and the men looking into heaven, the apostles now, they're no longer called disciples, but apostles. And they're looking into heaven and they're basically, the big question is the now what? Now that Jesus' physical presence is not here, what do we do? Who are we now? Um, that's, that will be the question that will carry us into, into the second chapter of the book of Acts. Um, there's this great day. The day is the celebration of the day of Pentecost. It's the, 
you know, we pay, you Penta five, so it's 50 days after Passover. It's a big, it's a big celebration. Um, and there are people from what would have felt like all over the world gather in Jerusalem for this celebration. But from far-flung areas, Jews from all the way from Rome, according to this text, all these different languages, all these different people gathered in this place. And here are a group of them who are also followers of Jesus. And the now what questions, the who are we now, what do we do next question is swirling. And so this is when the Holy Spirit moves. Um, the Holy Spirit moves and brings these people together. It's kind of like the Tower of Babel story. If the sign of brokenness is that all of these tongues and all of these people are now divided, it's that in reverse. They all speak different languages, but they all understand one another in their own language. It's a time of unifying. It's a time of understanding. It's a time of bringing together. Um, that's what the Holy Spirit, through fire and through tongues of flame, bring these people together. And from the inside, it's this remarkable moment of, of coming together around the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit that gather these, gathers these people together. It gives them, oh, this is who we will be, and this is who we are. But on the outside, people standing on the outside, there's, it's hard to understand what's going on. As a matter of fact, what they see are people who maybe appear to them to be drunk. Um, and that's when Peter speaks. And it's a remarkable thing because in the Gospel of Luke, as pretty much most of the Gospels, Peter doesn't come off really that great. And Peter is the one who will deny Jesus. Peter is the one who will get it wrong at the Transfiguration. But now Peter stands up, this imperfect person, the now Apostle Peter, stands up and starts to lead and starts to interpret and to preach and to teach. Um, it, it's, it's kind of this remarkable turnaround for Peter who goes from the one who denies Jesus three times to the one who now speaks for the church and speaks to what is happening. And it's this amazing thing of, of, of young people who are prophesying and old people who are dreaming dreams. If you think about it, how opposite is that? I mean, isn't it the young people who have their lives ahead of them who can vision and think about what the future holds? And aren't the older people the prophets who give wisdom and, and understanding to what life is? But they don't vision because life is short. But yet, through the Holy Spirit and at this moment, that's all turned on its head. It's the older people who are seeing future, the future in Christ, the future in the Holy Spirit, um, even past death itself. Um, the old will see the vision, and yet the young people will be the ones who will prophesy in the world to who God is. Um, it's, it's everything turned on its head. It's very un-Lutheran. <laughs> Lutherans like our order, and this there, there is no order to this. There is no that's why the, 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 I really miss being able to gather on this day because it's a day that I get to watch people come into the worship space and Amanda has already come up with something new for this year. One year it was balloons and last year it was cranes hanging from, from um, wire in the sanctuary. This is my feeble attempt to just try to make it feel and look different in the space. Um, it's a new way of seeing a space that we've become so comfortable with seeing. I appreciate that she does that. And it speaks to the day, the spirit that gives us the ability to see with new eyes and see future. Um, and that's why I picked this, because it 
feels like the big, okay, now what? Um, you should be at council. And at council, we, we struggle with it. Now what do we do? And now what do we do? And now what do we do? And what does the future hold? And when will we be able to safely gather? And, and, and I pick this spirit, this manifestation of the spirit, because it helps us to remind us to see that there is so much more past what we're in the midst of. The future is open. The future is even open to us past death itself. We can vision a time of gathering at our Lord's table with those who have gone before us. And that's the image. And, 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 and it also speaks to a present concern. It's, it's interesting because they've seen Jesus ascend and they heard Jesus saying he's come back. And the big question that weighs on everybody's mind is, how will we know? How will we know when Jesus returns? How will we know? Um, it, 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 it's a great concern. It's even, there are whole denominations even to this day who are concerned about knowing when Jesus returns. But Jesus' own words will say, I, I, I will come back the way I left. We hear that from the angels that, that talk to the apostles. We also hear in the prophecy of Jeremiah that, oh, trust me, the world will be shaken when Christ return. Don't worry about that. Worry about now. And now is hope in Christ. Now is the kingdom. A continuing theme throughout the book of Luke and the book of Acts is being the kingdom now. What will we be now? We will be people of hope who will prophesy, who will see visions and know that Christ is with us, but more importantly, know that Christ is in our future. And that's what I think we need to hear right now, is it feels like forever that we have been stuck. It feels so uncertain with what our lives and what the world will be like. But the Holy Spirit moves us, pushes us forward, and gives us vision and hope into the future. Past the cross into new life past death into eternal hope. Um, I focused a lot on the 25th anniversary of my ordination, and I didn't think I would, but because of the wonderful gifts that this congregation has given me, it's given me time to reflect on that. And 25 years of this, 25 years, and now in my fourth congregation, um, I think a lot about a young Pastor Matt. I've, people have been sending me pictures and my hair was so dark um, and my children were so small. Um, and I think about that Pastor Matt. I think about the first, first day that Pastor Matt stayed, sat in his pastor's study at Center Grove Lutheran Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina. And I think how he sat behind his desk in the pastor's study. And I remember this young man who struggled with so many things. One of them, the least of not being, is, is his dyslexia. And I remember this young pastor, Matt, who had gotten through seminary. And, but in the midst of seminary, he deeply, deeply, deeply was concerned about would he just be able to be a simple parish pastor? It, his own dream, his own vision was just to be a simple parish pastor. Just, just to be ordained and to serve any community in a parish. And then there he was ordained sitting in his pastor's study all by himself. And he came to one crushing question. 
now what? Now what do I do? You know, I've reached what I thought I wanted, and here I am, and now what? And if I could go back to that young Pastor Matt, I would tell him, you're going to do for the next 25 years exactly what you will do at that moment at your pastor's study desk. And that is, you will preach, you will teach, you will administer the sacraments, you will forgive sins, and you will help people know that they are reconciled to God and to one another. And you will do that for 25 years. You'll just keep on keeping on. And that gives me the ability to not look at 25 years as the end, but as just a pause. There is so much more. There is visions into the future. And an older pastor, I can still see visions. I can still dream dreams. Um, be with the community and help them in the midst of being stuck in their homes to say, but Christ is still moving. We are still doing the work of the church. We are still feeding the hungry. We are still championing the poor. We are still preaching and teaching. And even though it's not the best way we can do it, it's a way of we can still administer sacraments and we can still celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit, even in this cyberspace. So I give thanks to the Holy Spirit. I give the thanks to this wild Holy Spirit that moves in ways that we can't imagine. And it gives us the ability to dream dreams. And, and I ask you to, to take time today to be with that spirit and to know that the ministry of the church is moving forward and that we will move forward with it. Just let me conclude by saying, I love you as your pastor. Christ loves you more than I can even begin to. And with that love, know that coronavirus is not the end. It's just a road. There is so much more. Thanks be to God. Amen.